Okay, in this video, we're gonna continue a discussion on some previous videos where we look at the matrix exponential. But now we're gonna look at the matrix exponential with a variable. So uh, just to be sure, given A, a two by two real matrix, we wanna find E to the T A, where T is a variable. So this will be useful for, for solving systems of differential equations. So here's case number one, which I'm not gonna go over in detail because it's very similar to what we had done in the past when there is no variable. And that is if A has two eigenvalues, now th these may not be distinct, but the important thing here is that there are two distinct eigenvectors, V1 and V2. So if we set P to be the diagonalizing matrix, so its columns are made by V1 and V2, those eigenvectors, then we have E to the TA is given by the following. So we have P times this diagonal matrix, E to the lambda 1T, E to the lambda 2T times P inverse. Okay, and now you might say, well, what if these are complex numbers? Well, that makes these complex conjugate eigenvectors as well, which makes this a complex number inside the exponential, which turns it into sines and cosines. But when you multiply it all out, all the complex numbers will disappear because we started with something um, that was a two by two real matrix. So I'll have some videos in the future where we solve differential equations like this and we'll see everything cancel. So what I really wanna focus on for this video is this second, like a little bit more interesting case, which is the case when A is not diagonalizable. So we have a C, single eigenvalue lambda and a single eigenvector V and we set P equal to this. So it's not a diagonalizing matrix, but it is a matrix that puts uh, a into something called a Jordan canonical form, which I'm not going to talk about in general. I'll just um, say that word in case you're interested in looking, to get, looking it up. So um, in this setup, we have the following. So we have P A P inverse will be lambda 1 0 lambda, which tells us that P times T A times P inverse is going to be lambda times T, T zero lambda times T. So that's how we get that variable in there. And now we can do the same kind of thing that we have over here um, for the matrix exponential, except we'll have to do a bit more calculation. So, um, oh sorry, this should be P inverse A P. And this should be P inverse A P. Good. So that again tells us that T A is equal to P lambda T T zero lambda T times P inverse. In other words, E to the T A is equal to P E to this matrix. So let's write that down. We have lambda T T zero lambda T P inverse. Okay, good. But now how do you find a matrix exponential? Well, you use the Taylor series for E. So this is gonna give us P and then times the sum N equals zero to infinity of one by N factorial and then lambda T T zero lambda T to the nth power and then we have P inverse. Okay, so now I'm gonna clean up the board and then we're gonna calculate what this matrix exponential ends up being. Okay, so we left off at this spot where we have this matrix exponential E to the TA is our matrix P times this sum of these powers of our as close to diagonal matrix as we can get for T times A. In other words, we have lambda T, lambda T, and T. Um, times one over n factorial, and then we have p inverse. So our goal is obviously going to be to calculate an arbitrary power of this matrix uh, lambda t, t, uh, zero lambda t. So uh, let's just go through a couple of examples, and then we'll guess what the solution is, and I'll let you guys think about how to prove it by induction if you're psyched on doing something like that. So uh, let's look at first lambda t, t, zero lambda t, squared, and notice in this case we get the following. So we get lambda t quantity squared, lambda t quantity squared on the diagonal. We get zero in this lower left hand spot, and in the upper right hand spot we get the following. We get q times lambda times t squared. Okay, good. Now uh, let's see what happens when we cube it. 
So we have lambda t, t, zero, lambda t cubed, and what we'll get is lambda t quantity cubed, lambda t quantity cubed, zero, and then again, I'll let you guys multiply it out, and what you see that you'll get is three um, lambda squared t cubed. So now we can look at this and kind of guess what the arbitrary power is. Again, we could prove it by induction. It wouldn't be too hard. But what you'll end up getting is lambda t, t, zero, lambda t to the nth power is, so we've got this nth power of the quantity lambda t on the diagonal. And then on the off diagonal, we have this n and then uh, we have this n times t times lambda t to the n minus 1. Good. So that's probably the best way to write that down. So now, let's just look at this inside sum here and see if we can calculate that. So here, I'll take that and notice we're going to have... Um, <clears throat> The sum, well, actually, let's go ahead and bring the sum inside the matrix because that should be pretty easy to do. So notice in this upper left and this lower right-hand spot, we have the sum n equals 0 to infinity of lambda t to the n over n factorial. So that should look pretty familiar. That's e to the lambda t. And then we'll have the same thing down here. So the sum n equals 0 to infinity lambda t to the nth over n factorial. Okay, pretty sweet. And now let's see what we have on the off diagonal spot. Well, we obviously have zero right here. And then up here, we have the sum n equals zero to infinity of, I'm going to bring a t out here. Here, I'm going to put some dots here to see that uh, we can see where the matrix entries end up. Good. I'm going to put a t right there. And now we have n times lambda t to the n minus 1 over n factorial. And now notice we can do a little bit of a trick here. We can cancel this n and turn this into an n minus 1 factorial. And now notice that this sum can be re-indexed to be the same as these on the diagonal. So in other words, this sum on the off diagonal is the same as this one on the diagonal, except now we're multiplying by t. And we already talked about how these on the diagonal are e to the lambda t. So that tells us that we have e to the lambda t, t e to the lambda t, 0 e to the lambda t. Okay, great. But now... Uh, it's pretty common to factor out an e to the lambda t, and that's going to give us 1, t, 0, 1. Okay, good. And now, uh, we have a formula for e to the t a, so all we do is take this red underlying thing in the bottom left right of the board and plug it into this spot in the top, and then we've got a formula for e to the t a. Okay, good. I'm going to clean up the board, and then we're going to look at an example of this. Okay, good. Now we're ready for an example. So let's recall this fact that we just established. If A is a 2 by 2 matrix, it has only one eigenvector eigenvalue, and let's say the value is lambda and the vector is V, then if we set P equal to this matrix whose first column is V, the second column is 1, 0, then E to the T A is P times this matrix, e to the lambda t, t e to the lambda t, 0 e to the lambda t, p inverse. Great, and so our example is the following. Given this matrix A, so we have 3 minus half, 2, 1, find e to the at. Okay, so let's get going. We need to find the eigenvector eigenvalue, um, so that means we need to look at the characteristic polynomial. So we have p a of x, equals the determinant of x i minus a. So let's see, that's going to be the determinant of x minus 3. And then we have positive half, because we're subtracting. And then we have negative 2. And then we have x minus 1. OK? So now, notice that is equal to x minus 3 times x minus 1. Um, plus 1 using the AD minus DC um, formula for the determinant. <coughs> okay, so let's simplify this a bit. So let's see, here we get x squared minus 4x 
plus 3 plus 1. So notice that's going to give us x squared minus 4x plus 4. And that is going to factor like, like x minus 2 squared. So that means we have a single eigenvalue of uh, lambda equals 2. And so now we're going to look for the eigenvectors. So because this is a 2 by 2 matrix, we know that there's going to be only one eigenvector. Because if there were two eigenvectors, then this matrix would be diagonalizable, but it would be diagonalizable to a multiple of the identity, which means the original matrix would have had to be a multiple of the identity because it would commute with everything. So I'll let you guys think about that, but given those clues, we know we're only going to get one eigenvector. Okay, great. So uh, in order to find the eigenvector, we're going to need to look at the null space of 2 times the identity minus A. In other words, the null space of this matrix where we have plugged in the eigenvalue for X. So let's see. We're going to get negative 1 here, half here, we'll get negative 2 here, and then we'll get 2 minus 1, which is 1 here. But now notice that those um, rows are multiples of each other. So I'll do a little bit of row operation and notice I'll get this is the same thing as the null space of um, 1 minus half, 0, 0. Good. Which means if V is in this null space, and let's call V maybe X comma Y, that tells us that 1 comma minus half, 0, 0 times x, y equals 0, which tells us that we have x minus half y equals 0, and then y is a free variable. Again, our first column is a pivot column, so that's a, like a not free variable, but our second column is not a pivot column, so that corresponds to the free variable from linear algebra. Now from here, we can see that x equals half y. y is again a free variable, so we can take it to be anything we want. And since we want just uh, one eigenvector, we can choose y to be something nice so that it turns x into uh, an integer. So let's choose y to be 2, which makes x 1, which tells us that v is going to be 1, 2. So again, we chose y to be 2, that forced x to be 1, so we get v to be that. But now, notice that means our matrix will be 1, 2, 1, 0 by this uh, fact over here, which we just established. Okay, good. So I'm going to clean up the board, and then we'll finish this off. Okay, let's see where we are. We have a single eigenvalue of uh, lambda equals 2, a single, a single eigenvector of 1, 2. We form this matrix 1, 2, uh, 1, 0. We calculated its inverse. I did that kind of off the screen, but I assume that if you're watching a video about the matrix exponential, you probably know how to find the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. And so the next thing we want to do is use this fact so we know that e to the t a, where a was given by kind of our goal in the example will be the following. So it will be 1, 1, 2, 0. And then we'll have e to the 2t, t e to the 2t, 0 e to the 2t, and then we have p inverse, which is 0, half, 1, minus half. Okay, good. And then again, I'll let you guys multiply all that out. What I will do is factor an e to the 2t out of the whole thing. And I'll uh, say that we're going to get the following. We'll get 1 plus t in the upper left spot. We'll get minus half t right there. We'll get 2t and then 1 minus t. So that's what we get after multiplying all of these out. So that's the matrix exponential of e to the ta in this case for this value of a. Okay, good. This is the end of the video.